1974, draft picks who didn't like the money they were offered or the teams that selected them had few options. But that situation was about to change. The NFL, since merging with the old AFL, hasn't had any competition to worry about except for a few players who straggle to the Canadian League. But even some of them eventually come back home. This year, though, there's a serious challenge for talent coming from the World Football League. The World Football League had 12 teams and announced a 20-game schedule to begin in the summer of 1974. Commissioner, do you think there's going to be any so-called price war between the new league and the NFL? What it will come to is uh, after uh, our selection meeting and then when the World Football League uh, continues their draft, uh, we'll just see what happens during the bidding for the playing talent. There's one thing the NFL had thought it ended uh, some years ago when they merged with the old AFL, but now with the WFL, here we go again. The WFL held a rookie draft one week before the NFL did. Players picked by both leagues had newfound leverage. Guard Tom Condon, the Chiefs' 10th round pick from Boston College, used the WFL to squeeze more money out of the tight-fisted NFL team that drafted him. Hank Stram offered me $2,000 to sign in a $14,000 base salary. And when he asked me what I thought about that, I said, well, Zeke Coach, I said, it doesn't sound that good. And he said, really? And he had a book on his desk, and he opened up the book and put his glasses on, and he said, what round were you drafted in? And of course he knew. <laughs> and I said, uh, the 10th. And he flipped through the pages, and he stopped, and he looked up and said, we've never had a 10th round draft choice make our football team. He said, as far as I'm concerned, son, I've just offered you $2,000 for a summer job. And boom, he slams the book shut. And I got drafted by the Boston Bulls of the WFL, and they offered me a $30,000 completely guaranteed contract. And so I called Hank Stram up, my first you know, individual negotiation. I didn't have an agent. And I said, Coach, uh, thank you for everything you've done and as nice as you've been to me, um, but I'm gonna go play uh, for a $30,000 completely guaranteed contract with the, with the Boston Bulls. After I went through my spiel about the Boston Bulls, he said, what kind of a signing bonus would it take for you to stay here? And I hadn't given this any thought at all, so I just blurted out a number that I thought was outrageous, and I said, $10,000. And he said, what about the base salary? And I said, 18, and he said, done. Arizona State quarterback Danny White was drafted in the third round by Dallas, but opted to sign with the WFL's Memphis Southman. White was the first quarterback taken in an NFL draft short on quality passers. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first time that a quarterback was not chosen in the first round. Every once in a while, you'll have a draft year where you're just on quarterbacks there. 74, you kind of came up empty. Danny White was probably the best quarterback in that draft. After him in the third round, you had guys like David James and Kim McQuilkin and Gary Marangi. I'm sure these are names that probably haven't been mentioned on TV since their NFL careers. White earned valuable experience in the rival league and twice as much money as the Cowboys had offered him. But the WFL was spurned by the majority of players it had drafted. I was drafted by the Birmingham Americans in the first round, and honestly, I never really considered it because ever since I could remember watching games on television, I wanted to play in the National Football League. The WFL would fold midway through its second season but its birth made an immediate impact on the NFL's status quo. The free spending upstarts threw a light on the more established league's stagnant salary structure. In this regard, the WFL influenced the NFL Players Association strike of July 1974. The strike proved beneficial to that year's rookie class, but not in a financial sense. 